Uh, uh, oh shit! Sorry. Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to be giving a presentation on a uh, Project Crobat, which is a um, very fast API for searching Rapid 7s Project Sonar dataset. Um, so yes, before we get started. Um, so I'm I, uh, Exterior Pen Tester, Head of Security Engineering at Engineering. It's my first time uh, speaking a uh, conference in person. Um, obviously, I made this project, and uh, that's my Twitter in case you want to take a look. Um, right, so let's start with what this is. If people aren't familiar with Rapid7's Project Sonar dataset, it is a massive dataset of DNS records that are gathered through various means, for example, scanning the internet and uh, parsing common names out of certificates, looking at stuff like certificate uh, stream, like CT transparency logs, stuff like that. So it's huge. It's about um, 183 gigabytes of JSON data with like 1.8 billion records in it. Um, <clears throat> now, this is really useful data because normally if you want to find data to do with DNS, you have to either fetch it and parse it yourself or you have to brute force it and stuff like that, which is fine for forward DNS lookups. When you want to start doing reverse DNS lookups, that becomes a bit more tricky and allows you to if you can access this data very quickly, it allows you to do some very rapid like research stuff. Like you can say, okay, yeah, just give me every single S3 bucket on AWS. And it won't get you all of them, but it'll get you a lot of them. Or you can say, give me, like, here's our AWS IP address. Let's do reverse DNS on that, and we can see things that are pointing to it. Um, so yeah, it's an extremely fast DNS API. Um, the old version, which I'll talk about in a bit, was... So like 100 milliseconds to do a lookup in Mongo. The new one takes a few nanoseconds to do it. Um, if you try it now, it won't take a few nanoseconds because it gets about 8,000 requests a second now. But um, yeah, so we can do reverse DNS queries. It supports both single address reverse DNS queries or you can give it a side range so you can pull reverse DNS records for an entire slash 8 ASN or entire slash 16 and it'll just give it to you no problem. Um, <coughs> You can find TLDs, so that's another thing you can do. If you've got a domain and you want to see what other TLDs are registered to it, usually you'd have to brute force that, but with this, you can just say, give me that data back, and it'll give you all the different TLDs, um, which can be useful for finding other domains owned by companies. And obviously, you can find subdomains. It's not going to be the most comprehensive way of doing it, but you can get it back instantly. So it's helpful to get a quick look at what things are, like, oh, does this company have a VPN? Let's have a look. Um, so yeah, it gets thousands of requests per second in prod now. As you can see here, this is our Cloudflare stats. I don't know if you can actually see that that well, but um, Cloudflare stats for 24 hours, it gets about, in the past 24 hours, I had like 500 million requests. So it has a lot of load. Um, so now we're talking about how this is done. So the old approach, which I had running in prod for quite a while until eventually it just started to degrade really badly under the load it was getting. Um, <laughs> the basic approach was, as you can see there, you would take a domain name like that and you would split it into these components here. And what that would allow you to do is put it in Mongo, uh, MongoDB or any kind of database and do a full string, like a full string index on the data as opposed to having to do a full text search. So you could do a composite index on like um, the domain and the TLD, and that would allow for very fast querying because it's not having to do like substring searches; you're just matching an exact value. Um, the difficult part with making this solution was getting the data like that in the first place, because if you've got your you've got loads of different TLDs, you can't just say, okay, we'll chop the two first bits off if we separate it by dots, because some of them have three, some of them have four, some of them are like faux TLDs that don't really exist, but they're like set up by companies. So we wrote this domain parser up at the top, which is able to do uh, like 400 million, parse 400 million DNS records a second. It uses suffix arrays to do that as opposed to like regex or anything else. Um, so on GitHub, you can use it, you can see the path. Um, so the, issue, the, old, the old approach was, yeah, it's fast, but not fast enough. Crumbled under load, already optimized, and it assumed that databases were the best solution for doing this because, well, at least to me anyway, I thought, well, people who write databases know what they're doing, probably more than I do. So we'll just trust that and we'll do that. And uh, that'll give us the best results, right? If we've got fast database, fast indexes, great. You know, they're smarter than I am, we'll move on. Um, but the difference is data sets, uh, databases have to work with very different constraints on their data. For example, 
you have data that changes, so you need indexing strategies that support changing data. Whereas this data, it doesn't change. We pull it from Project Sonar, and we index it, or import it, and we index it, which means that we don't have to worry about data changing, which means we have a lot of other um, ways in which we can search this data. So our data set is static. Sorting data has magical properties in computer science for doing things quickly. Um, and then we're going to check out the database, right? <coughs> so here's kind of the way it works. We have a tool called Sonar to Crobat, which takes Project Sonar, converts it into our Project Crobat format. We sort that data, and then we use Crobat to index to calculate an index over that data so we can instantly jump to the place in the file that we need to retrieve the data we want. And then Crobat server is just a gRPC slash HTTP server that serves that data to you from requests. So um, we're going to look at how this kind of approach works now. So as you can see, it starts kind of the same. We do we take the uh, domain name and we split it up into its parts. But then we rearrange it to be the domain, then the TLD, then the subdomain in a CSV format. Now what this means is if you were to index this and you're just looking for all the different TLDs of on security, you can search and jump by the first bit, or if you only got the TLD as well and just the stuff limited to just on security.io, you do the first two bits, and then you just have to reconstruct every line from that data into its original format. With reverse DNS, what we've done is convert the IP address to a decimal format because it's easily sortable and searchable and comparable. Um, and then we just yeah, do a little CSV like this. So then what we do is we sort the data. So everything's in a line, which means if you know where the first occurrence of something is in this list, all you have to do to get the rest of them is just read forward through the entire data set until you get to it. And this is especially helpful with reverse DNS because now it's in a, because now if you're doing CIDR lookups, you just take the min and the max IP in that CIDR, convert it to decimal, jump to the start, and read forward until you hit the end. So you're not having to do, well, with the previous version, it would, um, you'd have to do a different query for every IP in the, you know, in the, um, the CIDR range to so calculate them all and request all of them. And that became, there's a lot of overhead there because you're doing lots of lookups. Um, so yeah, are we finished? Is that it? You just sort it, and we do it, and it's done. It's like, no, well, because we can do better than that, because we can get a, one complexity on retrieving this data from the database. And like, okay, well, how do we do that? The answer is, well, you use hash maps, right? So with a hash map, if you, no matter how big your hash map is, if you're trying to get a value back from it, it's always going to take the same time, pretty much, regardless of how big it is, because you put a value in, it gets hashed, and that tells you exactly where it's going to be in the data set. So I tried using a hash map initially for this. But the indexes that you make are quite large. So instead, uh, we're using Redis, which is basically the same thing, but just a bit fancier. Um, <clears throat> so here's Corbett to index. This is the way it works. So as you can see, I grepped this out of the file. So some of the stuff on the reverse DNS is a bit yeah, it's not accurate. It would all be in line, but no, it's a bit not. So we sort everything, you know, descending order, we sort everything, and then we scan through the file, and we look for, in the domains one, the, we look for the domains of the first part in the comma-separated lines, and we log the byte offset of that in the file into Redis, and then... We keep reading forward, and then when we hit a different one, we write that to Redis, et cetera. You know, just keep going through. So now we know the exact position of every domain in the file where the data starts. So as you can see here, if you read CLI, get at and t tells you the exact byte offset in the file. Um, the same thing, we do it for the um, reverse DNS. But if you were to do that directly for every single IP address, you're going to end up with a huge index. So instead, what it does is it rounds every uh, every IP address down to like the nearest thousand or hundred thousand, whatever you want to bucket it as, and it puts it in. So when you go and query, it'll convert your IP address to decimal, round it down, retrieve the index, and then it'll scan forward until it finds the data you're looking for, and it'll keep scanning until it finishes finding the data you're looking for. So 
Yeah, we can do a quick demo, I think. Um, no, uh, yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but um, Does that work? Yes, there you go. So that's getting back the subdomains for ATT.com. See so it finishes in like just under a second. If you do see the lines, there are 17,000. We could do reverse DNS. So we do one dot one dot one. See that? You get all those back. You know, put that on a slash eight. And it, you get a lot of stuff back for a long time. If you were to, <laughs> if you were to do AWS or something, you get about four gigabytes of data back from it. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's it, basically, I think. Is there any questions? It's uh, 180 gigabytes. Sorry, yeah, the question was how big is the data set? It's 180 gig. Um, about an hour or less, I think. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Rapid7 gather the data and they release it. Sorry, the question was, um, is the data static? What do you mean by that? So the um, Rapid7, what they do is they do this, these scans every like week or so, and then they release their data. So we are basically taking that new data, ingesting it, and throwing out the old stuff. So anything else? It is, yeah. You can, you can go and download it yourself. Which you'd think some of the people doing thousands of requests a second to this would do, because it seems like they're just scraping the whole thing, but uh, apparently not. So, yeah. Pardon? So it's because it's too fast. You don't do a job. Yeah, I guess so. You can run your own one, though. It's on GitHub. You just run your own. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's completely the whole thing's open source. It's on um, GitHub, uh, GitHub.com slash CGBall slash Sonar Search. Additionally, obviously, this is I should probably mention that actually. This is available uh, here, so you can go here to omnisent.io and you can test it out like this, and I'll give you back all your domains. Same with the reverse DNS lookups and the TLDs. Sorry, we. Yeah. Um, this is a GitHub for it. So there's a command line tool you can install, uh, written in Go, which will stream the data from the server in gRPC. So you don't have to do any pagination for it. It'll just stream it until it's done. So, yeah. Um, reverse DNS stuff is very useful. So if you are looking at a host, for example, and you want to see maybe what other vhosts are on it, it's very easy to reverse that. If you want to, if you look at a company's ASN, for example, and you want to find out what domains are on that for vhosts, you can run the whole ASN through reverse DNS, and therefore it's you know very easy to find assets that they have. Um, similarly, if you're looking at one, um, <clears throat> if you're looking at one range and you know this client's got one domain, you can do reverse DNS through that and often you will find other like top level domains, or not top level, you know what I mean, like full domains, which they use and they own, which otherwise you wouldn't know about because they're, they're nothing to do with the company. So in, t in terms of naming and stuff. All right, looks like there's no more questions. Uh, an awesome tool and a fantastic tool. Thank you very much, Carl.